Today, NVIDIA announced a limited time pricing promotion and games bundle for their high-end Ampere cards. And this definitely wasn't just to keep the summer sales rolling. No, this was, as far as I've gathered, NVIDIA finally accepting reality, or more accurately, accepting their AIB's reality. Speaking to some of my distributor and AIB sources, I've been told that they are starting to just tell NVIDIA to go pound sand, that it doesn't matter if they threaten to pull Lovelace allocation to certain companies, they do not want more Ampere or Turing stock until they liquidate their existing warehouses of what they already have. And other AIBs tell me that NVIDIA simply underestimated how desperate they were and didn't take their threats that they didn't care if they pulled allocation seriously, that they needed help from NVIDIA if they were going to clear stock before Lovelace launched in October. And, well, the more I talk to these contacts, a more interesting tidbit started to emerge consistently from a few people, that the overwhelming majority of used mining stock hadn't even hit the West yet. Indeed, one contact in Asia said that they are selling off their cards for the most part over there, but that the mining cards you're seeing hit eBay in the West right now, these are not being flooded from mining firms in Asia and all over the place. These are really just the mid-size and even really low tier, like someone who just has a couple mining rigs in their basement cards that are hitting eBay first. The real flood of used mining RTX 3080s and 3070s and so on haven't hit yet. And AIBs are aware of this and desperate, even if it means taking a slight loss on some of their models, to get their new cards out and selling before the flood of mining cards hits the market because it really hasn't hit the West yet. That RTX 3090 that I told you I got for $800 on eBay and is actually running in my desktop right now and rendered this video you're watching in, yeah, I can't wait to tell you about it. It came in great condition and I plan to use it as a portion of a video advising which cards are safe to buy on eBay for which price. Anyways, that $800 3090, that's just the start, and AIBs know it. They know there's about to be a flood of probably around $500 RTX 3080s and $300 3070s before the end of summer, and they don't want to have nearly half of the stock they have right now is new cards on the market. They want to clear as much as possible before those cards arrive. So, yeah, that's how I decided to open this video. A bit of a supply pricing crash update, since I know this is something a lot of people are interested in right now. And I do believe I just told you some pretty important information to guide you on what cards to watch out for over the coming month. But th that's not really what I'm here to talk about today. Outside of NVIDIA supply, I actually gained some much juicier NVIDIA information. And it coincidentally lined up with some stuff I was gathering from Intel sources as well, but for different reasons. You see, both NVIDIA and Intel are making some hard decisions about how hard to push their flagship cards this year. What is victory worth? It means different things to different companies. If you're a company that can take the top performance crown, it may be worth doing everything you can to make sure you don't lose it. But then again, if getting victory or hitting a certain performance target makes your product look sillier and you're not going to win anyways... Maybe it's not even worth launching. And first, let's start with the NVIDIA flagship, the RTX 4090 or 4090 Ti or Titan. Let me put some quotes on screen to tell you what I'm talking about. Basically, the RTX 4090 24 gigabyte is all but entirely confirmed to be taking the mantle of the 450 watt 8102 SKU in launching in October. Now, to be clear, multiple sources have told me that nothing is 100% decided, yet NVIDIA could shift how they decide to segment their dies. But right now, the 450 watt 8102 card is the 4090 it is in october but that 600 watt 8102 card i told you about a few months ago nobody says it's been canceled yet that briefing did happen and no one's been updated to not plan for cooling a 600 watt fully enabled 8102 card that hasn't been named yet nvidia may still decide to name full 8102 the titan instead of a 4090 ti but this is all going to depend on how rdna3 plans out and either way 
Lovelace volume will hit before December, and one of those cards should be a 450 watt RTX 4090 that roughly doubles performance. Could be a bit more, could be a bit less than double the performance of a 3090 in rasterization. And there really are a few good reasons for NVIDIA to tell their partners, hey, look, we're sure 450 watts, we're sure that's the 4090. Prepare the groundwork for making a 600 watt card, but just prepare it and stand by for now. You see, until NVIDIA knows exactly the tippy top performance of RDNA 3, they don't technically know where they need to get the 4090 Ti to. Like, if the 4090 launches and takes the performance crown, then they can just wait. You know, tell their AIB is, hey, take all the time you need in the world. In fact, we're actually going to wait to learn a little bit from the 4090, redesign the board a little bit like we did with the 3090 Ti, maybe even wait for GDR7 as I've detailed it should be able to support. And then we can launch that as some flagship we know AMD can't touch early or mid next year. Or even, you know, if they know AMD can't touch it, they may actually wait till December and accelerate it kind of like a Titan Volta situation where they say, hey, We've got this 48 gigabyte card. It's going to use 600 watts. It's the new Titan. AMD can't touch it. Get the future early with us. Or, of course, another option is if they know that they're not going to win the performance crown, they're just going to tie it, then that's when they go, oh, launch the 4090 Ti 600 watt right away. Don't call it the Titan. We don't want AMD to ever beat a card again that we call a Titan. So you can see the different reasons NVIDIA may decide to launch a 4090 Ti sooner or later, depending on how RDNA 3 pans out. But right now they know, we know what the 4090 is. We know that's coming out in October. Full steam ahead with that. And like I said earlier in this video, the RTX 4090 Ti is not the only gaming flagship from a company that the company isn't quite sure what they want to do with yet. There's also Intel Alchemist in the A780. This was the card that actually I first leaked two years ago that was supposed to be an RTX 3070 Ti competitor. You see, 3070 Ti... That's not going for the top performance crown, especially because Alchemist is coming out a year late. And so, well, Intel may decide to go in an entirely different decision with their gaming flagship, a much more pessimistic direction. And I want to talk about that. And actually, I'm going to detail the entire Alchemist lineup as of its being planned right now. But first, an ad from a sponsor. Reese. Lovelace, RDNA 3, Raptor Lake, and Zen 4 are coming out this year. Aren't you excited? Even if it doesn't make sense, it's usually pretty easy for me to get Reese excited about anything I talk to her about in a certain tone. But that's not usually true for most humans that try to learn new skills, and that's why it's really helpful if there's an online platform that actually goes out of its way to inspire you with its courses like Skillshare. Skillshare is a sponsor of this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries who come together to find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. The reasons for its popularity all over the world are obvious. It's entirely ad-free, so you can stay in the zone where you're trying to learn. It has new premium classes being launched every week, so there's always something new to discover. And the entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, German, and English, meaning that you can learn from many different locations and many different languages. I learned in English, and I really enjoyed learning in English, Ali Abdal's class on starting a side hustle. This is a skill that I think a lot of people could pull from to get a little bit of extra income on the side. And the first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description will get one month of Skillshare free. Clicking this link in the description really does help the channel a lot, and it helps you learn new skills that can benefit fit you for many years go to skillshare and support moore's laws dead today in a recent interview on gamers nexus an intel rep acted a little cagey about what intel skus would be coming out soon and even what regions specific aibs would be supporting the a380 in right one card for the a750 there's an a380 that may or may not end up widely spread in the U.S. market. Don't yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of up to our partners about how A380 goes. Right, and then uh, is that the only names we have right now? <laughs> Ryan, do we have more names we can talk about? 
Yeah, we cannot talk about more names. Okay, yes. It's and up to our partners to uh, disclose what they want to do. Right. And yeah, it's weird. Uh, let me just get straight to the leak presentation to show you what's going on as of now, because it will give you a little bit of context as to why Intel is acting so indecisive about what they're launching. They kind of still don't know. All right, this is the Intel Arc lineup update mid-July 2022, and I do have some details here that differ from what people seem to think is coming out this month. So, first of all, I have to emphasize that this information has been pieced together from several sources with documentation on these products. I trust them, but I cannot trust that anything Intel plans to do will actually pan out how they say it will anymore. Unfortunately, I just get the feeling that little things can continue to change is you're about to see what Intel's planning to launch as of now is quite a bit different from what I detailed half a year ago. So just to give you an example of how weird things are right now, only the A380 was fully specified to Intel partners before July. That means things like the A780, A770, A750, and A580 remain semi-mysterious to AIBs. You see, Intel, NVIDIA, AMD, before they launch a product, they brief their partners on a bomb, what it will cost, the components you need, how much it will cost to purchase, which ones from Intel, which ones they need to buy on their own. This has not been done for anything but the A380 until at least this month, so... Uh, that just tells you how not ready Intel is with a lot of these SKUs. But anyways, let's get into it. So the A780, this is the fully enabled top SoC, the RTX 3070 Ti 3070 competitor that I'm believing may never come out at this point. It, it was going to be 512 execution units clocked at 2.3 gigahertz at 230 watts or higher. And in fact, I even detailed it a bit in a video in December of last year. There is room for both an 18 gigabit per second overclocked model. Again, they validated that top model to 18 gigabit per second. None of the actual ones I'm seeing being tested for final release have 18 gigabit per second, but it is validated to it. You see, back then I had documentation showing models being validated with 18 gigabit per second GDR6 over a 256 bit bus. And I've actually been given the okay from some of my sources to show this documentation since it's gotten a little old and I blacked out most of it. This is real. Intel has validated at least 18 gigabit per second GDR6, and they did plan to launch a 16 gigabyte and then 12 gigabyte set of cards, but it's changing. The A770, as of now, is the one being starting to be detailed to Intel partners that is being pointed to as a RTX 3060 Ti or even just 3060 competitor. This still has the full 512 execution units, but they are only operating at 225 watts, and it may get an 8 gigabyte option as well, which to me indicates they're making this more of a mid-range to lower mid-range product if they're going to offer it in 8 gigabytes and not mandate 16 gigabytes for the model. Again, there was a 16 gigabyte model meant to compete with the 3070, but it is not being detailed right now like the A770 is and like the A750 is, as an RX 6600 competitor with 448 execution units at 225 watts, same TDP as the one above it, and 8 gigabytes of GDR6 over a 256-bit bus. And then there's the A580, an RX 3050 competitor that seems to have conflicting information on some of the stuff I've seen. That's all I can really say. But one thing that seems clear is they are positioning the A580 to be a competitor to the 3050 with 256 to 384 execution units at 175 watts. And again, with eight gigabytes of GDR6. Interestingly, I have seen some models that have a 256 bit bus with these execution unit amounts. So for now, I would just say it's a 3050 competitor with the same amount of RAM as a 3050, but I can't promise you if it's 256 or 128 bit yet. It may be 256 bit. And then of course there's the A380 that is having its reviews come out right now. This is an RX 6400 competitor. They want it to be a 6500 XT competitor, but that's not what it is right now. And I don't really need to go into this too much. You guys know the specs. Then there's the A310 below it. This is a GTX 1630 competitor. Honestly, from what I've seen, that's its performance at best, unfortunately. And it should be 96 to 128 execution units below 75 watts with 4 gigabytes of GDR6 over a 64-bit 
bus. And again, I just want to be clear here. Do not be surprised if these change before launch. I think the A770 is basically locked in stone. The A750 most likely is. But as you can see, some of these models stay are a little cagey. And that's why I'm keeping them in white text. Because even the release date, which without giving too many details, is basically described as through. I'm not kidding. Through July and August, whatever the heck that means. Usually there's a fixed date. It just seems a little murky for me to be super confident. None of this will change. And interestingly, I'll throw this in as well. Intel has indicated that they're planning new ARC products in a quarter four, quarter one refresh for Raptor Lake laptops. And do you see what I'm kind of indicating here with the A780? The A380 is the only card that right now I can 100% confirm has been fully detailed and is, of course, launching right now with AIBs to real customers. Everything else, the A770, A750, A580, A310, these cards are not fully specced out yet. And so I'm guessing they're not launching until August. And in fact, the A780 isn't in any documentation right now. That's not to say Intel couldn't do a A780 limited edition, maybe only with their reference coolers, not even going to AIBs. I think that's totally possible. But if that is happening, it just doesn't seem like it's happening in July for sure, and AIBs probably aren't ever going to support it. It'd probably be some kind of flagship Frontier Edition that barely competes with a 3070, and then the AIBs just sell everything else below that, probably mid to late August. And um, look, if Intel does cancel the A780, or if they already have for that matter, I can kind of see why. Look, Right now, Intel's only launching like 4 million cards into the channel, which is a drop in the bucket compared to how many are usually there. Now, it will mostly be launched over a couple of months, so it could make a small difference in supply, but it's not a lot. And because it's not a lot, Intel can force to take a loss so that it looks okay, right? They will sell these graphics cards at whatever price makes sense even if they lose a little money on each card and so if you know you're not going to sell that many and therefore you are willing to take a loss on each card to make a good first impression does it make a good first impression if your flagship is something you push to like 250 or 300 watts something that's using the amount of energy is a 3070 ti but at best barely matches a 3070 and then over the course of a few months kind of gets better drivers and gets close to a 3070 ti because if it launches and it's like they say, oh, it's a worse 3070 that uses more energy, that's going to leave a bad impression. But if Intel takes the top yields for now, doesn't push it super hard and just launches a 3060 Ti for 3060 Ti or lower pricing that's extra good at editing... I don't think that's going to leave a bad taste in gamers' mouths. I think they'll say, hey, I got this A770 for $400 or $450, or $350, and it's not loud. It looks cool. It games fine, and it edits like a champion. That would leave a better impression than pushing something to the moon that isn't going to take any performance crowns anyway. And also importantly, this allows Intel to reserve the 80 nomenclature for a truly high-end GPU when they launch. Battle Mage, it's just like how AMD called their flagship RDNA 1 card the 5700 XT. It was really a mid-range die meant to compete with mid-range products. You don't want to use that 8 name unless you're setting the precedence that this is what people can expect from 8 tier cards from you in the future. And right now, Alchemist just isn't a high-end competitor. That's what I think Intel is thinking about when they consider not launching the A780. And again, it's either that or Intel is just doing an ultra-limited release because they know it's not going to be that impressive next to a 3070 Ti anyways, and AIBs won't be supporting that model. And either way, I hope it's clear that both NVIDIA and Intel are making some interesting decisions about what's worth doing to take a given level of performance because Intel just isn't NVIDIA. They have different motivations, and for NVIDIA... If it means they can have some model no one's going to buy anyways that barely holds the crown or ties it, well, that's why they might do it, but they might not launch it right away because they want to make sure they don't lose the crown with whatever their top model is. And, uh, well, 
It's all depending on how good RDNA 3 is as well, which I cannot wait to start talking about. I've got some new details and some changes to some of the lineup that I can't wait to communicate, but that's going to have to wait for another video. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you want to make sure you do not miss those upcoming leaks for NVIDIA, Intel, and AMD products in the coming months, make sure you subscribe to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button. Tell your friends about us. Give us a super thanks. Support our sponsors to help out the channel. And the most important thing you could do is support the Patreon. For just like $2 a month, you get die shrinks and other premium content and access to the Discord. A new die shrink is coming out right after this video, interviewing a meta engineer about the history of the metaverse and what it's really trying to accomplish. And then, you know, you can also submit reader mails, get Broken Silicon early and ad free. There's, there's so much content out there for you if you support us on Patreon. We cannot do this without our patrons. But either way, thank you for watching.